Hey guys, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. Today I want to show you how to make a port pillow. It's basically just this little two bits of fabric with these little Velcro tabs. So I want to give you a little background information first. A port or a port catheter is a little tiny device. It's really kind of small like this. It goes underneath a patient's skin. It's usually up in the chest area, like to the right area of, you know, between, between your chin and your shoulder, over in the right quadrant or the left. It goes just underneath the skin, which is called subcutaneous, sub, come on, I got it, subcutaneous, right under the skin. And what it is, is it's, it's just this plastic and metal device. I'm going to go ahead and put a link down below to just your basic average port description. But ultimately what it is, is a small little device. It's part plastic and part metal. It goes underneath a patient's skin. And then it has this thin plastic rubbery tube that goes basically right to an artery that goes right to your heart. And people use this for when they have to get, like Rob's using it. He has one in his right chest side. He uses his for his chemo treatment and his IV fluids. So any type of time he's going to get some type of a liquid medication, they can just shoot it right into that port. Some people do get uh, forms of chemo and they just have it into their, their veins and stuff like that. But if you're going to have certain types of chemo or if you're going to be having, like Rob has to have it every week. Plus, as you most of you know, we go three times a week in addition to that for IV fluids just to keep them hydrated because chemo really messes with everything in your body. And if you were to have to get access with a needle constantly, it would wear out your veins and it's going to be uncomfortable. Now there is a little piece of skin that they have to go through with a needle. They have numbing spray if you need it or you can rub on a spray ahead of time. But because this is a, a small little device like this that sits just underneath your skin, if you're it doesn't matter which side of your body it's on, if it's on your left side and you're a driver, or if you're on the right side and you're generally a passenger. Most people I've seen have it on their right hand side. When you go to put a seatbelt on in the car, the seatbelt itself will push on that port and it can rub on it and it'll irritate it. Even though you have a shirt in between you and the seatbelt, something that's been, especially when it's a new port, it, it kind of, it's very painful to them. It's very uncomfortable. It's a discomfort. Now, Rob doesn't have a problem with his. He tends to recline his seat, so there's always a gap between the seatbelt and his chest, so he hasn't needed one of these. But when I was talking to the people at our cancer center, they said this is one of their most popular donations. They can never keep them in stock. So I thought as part of my, I turned 50 this year and I wanted to make 50 charitable donations this year. So as part of that, I thought I'd go ahead and make 50 of these port pillows. I grabbed out a wide variety of my fabrics. I have some fun fabrics in here. Now, most of the people are elderly, I'd say in their 60s and above. I have seen some people that are younger down in the beginning of, you know, their early 20s and the 30s and 40s. And I've seen some people that are up in the 80s and 90s. I don't know if there's anyone there going yet that's 100. And not that we discuss it, but every time you do something, you have to give your birth date. So every time they say something, they're like, I was born, you know, January 1st. 1990 or January 1st 1920 and you're like whoa you know they're quite young or they're quite old or whatever but anyways the basket has been sitting on a on the little nurse's desk and you can just go through and you can grab a couple of them if you want they're free for the patients people like myself will donate them they tend to empty out real quick. I will see them on, on one day, like I'll see them on a Thursday when Rob goes up for his chemo and the basket will be full. We'll come back Friday afternoon and the basket's empty again. But this past week, I've noticed that there's been five or six of them that's been sitting in the basket for an entire week. It's not, you know, we all have our different tastes for fabric, but the fabric choices that were there were more things you would find tucked away in the basement of your great, great aunt's house that's little bitty flowers or older prints that are just aren't quite fun. So I thought I would go ahead and make some fun ones. You guys have seen the bugs and I found some of this and I've got my turtles and I thought I'd do some Batman because just because you're getting cancer doesn't mean you shouldn't have something fun. And just because you're an older person doesn't mean you might not like The Walking Dead. So I thought I'd make some of these. And I did grab some nice calm ones for some of the ladies who might like just a, not something so intrusive. I've got some dogs and I thought some fun mustaches for the gentlemen. I do have some lips. 
And I have a couple Florida Gators because that is like the football team down here. I thought that might be fun for everyone to have. Just a nice little variety, something that's not too in your face. So everyone has something to choose from. Now you guys don't have to tell me, I know, I chat a lot, but I wanted to give you a little backdrop to the story of why I'm making these and what they're for. Because if I just tell you, let's make a porta pillow today, you'd be like, huh, what's a portable pillow? I want you to know what they're for, so if you choose to make them, you'll have somewhere to donate them to. I was thinking that also, you know how they have these car seat, the uh, seatbelt covers for the kids and just for anyone who likes to it's sort of, think about a pot holder that wraps around and attaches with Velcro. I thought if you didn't want to make that full blown thing like that, or you don't know how to, you could still make this, maybe not stuff it as much. There are very few videos and most of the blog posts that I've seen link back to the same exact PDF file that shows you how to do this. So I thought I'd go ahead and do the video today to give you some tips and tricks, explain how each step is done and why, because even I had a hard time figuring out some of the videos because I had to piecemeal them all together to figure out how these are made. For some reason, the Velcro part really threw me. But if you don't want to stuff a lot, I've seen some people were putting like pieces of foam or they were putting, uh, putting like quilt batting inside. So it was very thin and it would just add that little bit of protection. So if you wanted to do that for a child or something, you can do that also. But I'm going to show you the full way to do these from start to finish. So if you want to make some to donate, I mean, you, they're just good for about anything. And I, <laughs> you know what just popped into my head? Because I'm a crafter and a lot of people I know who craft like to do things in the car. You could actually hook this on your seatbelt the opposite way and you would have a pin cushion. For those that like to do hand sewing or hand embroidery, you hook this on your, your seatbelt and you'll have yourself a ready pin cushion. So if you're doing like hand applique, you always have to use all those little pins. You'll have a spot to do it. See, something for everybody. All right, let's get to it. You just need two rectangles of fabric. They don't even have to be the same if you wanted to mix and match them. I'm using cotton quilting fabric. You can use flannel. I, I believe you could probably even use minky. There was one lady that was had a video up that she was saying she was concerned that static electricity would getting in and out of the car and stuff like that with the flannel. She was concerned about that. But after having hers for several months, she said with the flannel, she had no problems with the static at all. So you can use almost any type of material you want. You can even use corduroy or denim. You would definitely need to change your needle and some of your measurements based on that. Denim is a little tough to go through. But just with the simple quilting cotton, this is like a five minute project. This video is gonna be like six times longer than it'll actually take you to make it. Everyone seemed to be using the same measurements. They were using a four by seven inch rectangle and you need two of them for the project. I was looking through my AccuQuilt dies and I have a rectangle die that's three and a half by six and a half. So I thought I would go ahead and try that because that way I could just lay my scraps of fabric down here and I could, I could punch out six layers of fabric at a time and it'd go through it really quick. But when I made it, the three and a half was definitely a, just a little bit too narrow. It would have been fine, but except when you stuff it, it kind of, as you see, it shrinks it in just a little bit more. And you see how much that we lose from each side when I went ahead and shrunk it in. So I decided that this was not going to work for this project, that I just go have to cut them out by hand and that I will use this to make a quilt instead. But if you have some type of a die cutting machine that will cut a four by something, I've seen some square ones where they cut them four by four. If you were to cut it six and a half inches long, that would be perfectly fine. I'm more concerned with the width of it. So what I did is I made my test one and I took it out to the car and I put it underneath the seat belt and it just didn't seem to protect enough that there was a lot of gaps on the side and space where the seat belt still could kind of touch you somewhere and I didn't want them to have any of those problems. So it's okay, I can take the time to go ahead and cut it four by seven. And then you're gonna need some Velcro. Some of them say you can cut it at three and a quarter and others say three and a half. I cut them up as a mixture of both, and I don't think either way really matters, but three and a half still work perfectly fine too. It's just a quarter of an inch. I just have the basic Velcro. If 
five years ago on Etsy, I purchased big rolls of the Velcro. It comes separated like this, and then you just have to put it together. So I went through, and I still have, as you can see, I have plenty to make some more. This was probably twice this size. It goes quick. You can purchase Velcro anywhere. I would try to find some of the stuff that's just a little bit softer. Sometimes this part here can get a little bit pokey. It will be on the inside of the seams, so it won't be too bad, and it's not gonna be touching the person's body, but at the same time, it's nice to have something that's not super stiff. If you look at the Velcro packages, they'll tell you at the top how, how stiff and how soft it is and stuff like that. You definitely want just your regular Velcro. You don't want any of the kind that has a sticky backing because we're not gonna actually stick it to anything. We need to be able to open it up, put it underneath, put our seatbelt on here, and then close it up. So if my hand were the seatbelt, you need it to be like that. So this definitely needs to be a the sew-in kind and nothing that's sticky. Other than the fact that Velcro itself is sticky. So I went ahead and I cut out a bunch of them for myself so that I'm all ready. I'm assembly line sewing these. I have my stacks of fabric. So you have your four by seven fabric, you have your three and a quarter or three and a half inch Velcro. So our first step is what I like to do is I like to go ahead and stitch the Velcro down. I just use that little itty bitty eighth of an inch stitch right there. You can put one of those long stitches if you want, but I just left my sewing machine at the standard and I just moved it so it was just a little past my sewing machine needle and I stitched that side down. And then I went over and I put the other side. So to find out where you want to put it, you can put your Velcro anywhere. But what I did is I folded it in half and I just gave myself a little registration marks. This is a light crease there. Now your Velcro has the loop side and then this fuzzy fleecy side, the, the soft side and the crunchy side. What I like to do is I decided that I would put the crunchy side down first. So that way, I mean, it's not going to touch you anywhere, but I don't know. I just felt like I wanted, in case anything happens, I wanted the soft side to be facing down towards the person and the crunchy side to be away from them, just so it doesn't touch them anywhere. What if a woman is wanting to wear a tank top or a gentleman's wearing a tank top? That way it wouldn't touch their skin anywhere. So I put this crunchy side down first. I went ahead and I did my barely an eighth of an inch just to hold it in place. And then... This is where I caught myself because I always make one little mistake somewhere and I caught myself in time because I have this one with the loops facing up, the crunchy side facing up. My first thought was to go ahead and put this one down the right side up, but you want to make sure you turn it over. And after this is stitched down, I just find my halfway mark and I hold it here with my finger and I let the Velcro lay down so that way they're connected together. Then I take it to the sewing machine and I just went ahead and did a little bit of a stitch there. So as you can see, I have them both stitched down. There's a little bit about a thumbs width of space between each of them here. This one is the three and a quarter. So three and a half would go just a little bit further. Now your next step after that is to place these right sides together. You might wanna make sure if you have a print that goes up or down, it's, I don't think it's really gonna matter one way or the other because you can only see one side at a time, but I like to go ahead and make sure they match so that if it's a directional print, both directions are going in the same way. Because when you use them, it's not gonna matter if it's this way or that way, but if it's a directional one, you might just wanna have them matching. I didn't even bother using pins or clips or anything. These two, the cotton fabrics just tend to hold themselves together. And if you get a little bit off, it'll be okay. That's what makes this a really good project for beginner sewers. If you wanna teach some children how to stitch these. These are really good for Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and other different types of church groups and stuff if they wanted to do some type of a charity project. And I took it over to my sewing machine and I just stitched all the way down one side. Then I went across the bottom and then all the way back up. And I left the one side open. I left one of the short sides open so that makes it easy for turning and stuffing. One of the things I wanna mention is when you're sewing this, you can feel where the other piece of Velcro is as you're stitching it. So just kind of feel and make sure, I used a, a generous quarter inch. So make sure as you're stitching along that you're not stitching over where the Velcro is overlapping. 
you wouldn't want to accidentally stitch down on both pieces because then you wouldn't be able to make this noise and you wouldn't be able to put it on the seat belt. So I just felt with my finger just to make sure as I'm doing it that there's plenty of space and I'm not stitching it down. And then I also went back and I just did a second line right next to it on both of them just to give that extra bit of security because this is going to get pulled on a lot here. So I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy. If you want, as you're going through, you can just go ahead and backstitch. There's no problem with that. I just happened to do it this way because I didn't think about it until I was already done. And then anytime we're turning anything, I do like to clip the corners. I stay away from the sewing line. If you can see, I went ahead and stitched this way and then that way instead of stopping and pivoting. So I just take it and I go from the stitch line to the stitch line and just chop that corner off. I only chop off the two bottom corners. This top one I leave as is. And you just stick your hands in there. The Velcro makes it a little bit hard to turn it because it's stiff. And once again, I have my little plastic crochet hook. I just pop my corners out. I'm using white thread on all of these. You can see the stitch line when I close it up. That doesn't bother me. I want to be able to make sure I can get through and make a bunch of these at the same time. If you were concerned, you can use more of a neutral thread. I just bought one of those giant white cones of thread, so I'm using that. You can separate your fabrics from dark and light, so you can do maybe a light gray for all of your light fabrics and then use a dark color for all your dark ones. But for me, I'm just going to go ahead and crank them all out. You're going to be able to see that I sewed these clothes anyway, so it, it doesn't, I don't think it's going to detract from, it's not going to make it look bad. I pop my corners out so they're nice. And at this point, I like to open up the Velcro. And just kind of loosen it up so it stays out of my way. As you're stuffing it, I found that if the Velcro was closed up normally, it made the center like this, and I had a hard time stuffing it evenly. These don't take very much stuffing. I usually buy that big giant five pound or whatever it is box of stuffing. And then I just keep small little Ziploc bags of it in the craft rooms for ease. When you do anything and you're stuffing anything, you want to kind of loosen up your stuffing and you want to put it in small chunks. You don't want to just take this whole piece and shove it in there. It makes your project lumpy. I push this all the way down to the bottom. Now this is the part that I couldn't find anywhere. Nobody tells you how much stuffing, how thick it needs to be. But as I was doing it, and I was thinking about the people who are gonna use it and why they're using it, that I thought if I stuffed it to the point where when I squeeze it, I can't feel my fingers. I mean, I, I can tell where they are, but there's stuffing in between them. This is still nice and soft like a pillow. It's not really thick. It's not firm or hard. But as I squeeze it down, can you about see how thick I got it? So I thought that would be just enough to cushion it without making it too firm and uncomfortable for the person that's using it. Because you don't want this firm, hard pillow going up against your port either. And I also don't stuff it all the way to the top because we're going to fold these ends over and then we're going to stitch it closed. So when it feels pretty good to me, it feels evenly stuffed all the way through. It always needs to put just that little bit more in. Sometimes I've seen when people are making pin cushions and stuff, they like to use old, old stuffing from pillows or they like to use leftover scraps of fabric or yarn. I wouldn't use that for these types of pillows. For one, a cancer patient or anyone who's getting types of IV therapy, their immune system tends to be compromised. So you wanna use something nice and clean. I wouldn't be making these if I had a cold or anything because I wouldn't want to get my germs on them. These are some of the considerations that you have to have when you're a cancer patient. They have to make sure that they're not bringing anything into the house. So I think the leftover fabric and yarn and stuff would just make it too firm and it wouldn't be soft and cushiony against their, their port because that's the whole point of these. So when it's kind of stuffed, you kind of think it's just about where it's at. I like to take my stuffing and just shove it down so that it's like two thirds full or down towards halfway where the Velcro is. 
That way it's out of my way when I'm sewing. You can put a pin right here to hold it down so it stays out of your way, but I find that it works pretty well to just stuff it down there and keep it out of the way. Now I just fold over, see I just folded it in. I'm not measuring it because this doesn't need to be a specific length. I just try to see when I fold it, do both ends, both sides look about right. They're about even. If I notice something's looking down like that a little bit, so it's kind of crooked, I'll just kind of bring that up a little bit. Now you can put a couple clips in here, you can put a pin in it, but I just take it over to my sewing machine and I use about a quarter inch or about an eighth and I just stitch this closed. I backstitch at the start and end so that it doesn't come undone. And as you can see, it's just like top stitching any other project. I just, just a little bit to hold it. If you're concerned that maybe, I mean, I was a little thought, my first thought was, is that going to be hold it in enough? But we're not giving these to small children to play with like bean bags. So I think one line of stitching would be perfectly fine. And I also thought that it would be fun if you had certain fancy stitches on your sewing machine. Like mine has some hearts and stuff. So I thought maybe on some of them, some of them I might put some hearts that go across it. Just to give that little extra touch and that little extra thought that we're thinking about you during this time when you're going through this whole process and everything. So once you get it all stuffed, then you're done. You just put your Velcro back in place. You no, know, because when I was doing it, I had it like this. So you just test it out to make sure everything's in there securely. And then you're done. I have seen some people where they they left a little opening here. You know how when we, when we turn a bag inside out or we stuff a toy animal or something, or even when we're making pin cushions, we leave that one little section and then they stuff it and they hand sew it. But most of the people and the ones I saw in the basket at our cancer center, they just stitched across. I think that's going to be the easiest and the quickest. Like I said, the video is much, much longer than the actual process of doing this from start to finish. So for those of you that are doing the charity along with me this year and you're making as many charity items as your birthday this year, this might be a good one for you. So many of us are familiar, we know someone who has cancer or a friend of a friend who's dealing with cancer that you can always ask them where they go and get their treatments if this might be something that they would like there. From what I've heard, all the people in the centers across the country, they really appreciate these. And I'm sure it's the same when you go to another country. It's a quick and easy project. It just takes scraps of fabric just takes a little bit of the stuffing and you're going to have plenty if you've purchased one of those those little bags you can get at like Michael's and Joann's and Walmart and stuff. You, you'll be able to make dozens of these with it. And if you do it in assembly line, it won't take no time at all. So I hope you enjoyed this quick project. And I hope you find some time to maybe make some yourself and donate them. Even if you only make five, you don't have to make 50 like I am. Every little bit helps, right? Well, until next week, I'll see you later. Bye.